Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. We have Natasha Rosie today, and she is a health and mindset coach. She is amazing, and she's done so much, and she has a very unique way of helping people, especially people who have become stuck in their lives. They wake up one morning, and they feel like they're on autopilot. They just, you know, they're not happy with themselves. They either feel depressed, they're, they're experiencing grief, or maybe they just feel numb because, you know, if this is you, if you feel like you have so many emotions going on and maybe you've been repressing emotions over the years, you just don't know how to deal with it. You know, she has different tools and techniques she's going to share today with us to help you become, I guess you could say, learn different tools, techniques, and strategies to overcome the emotions and the, and the, and the, and the obstacles that you have today. So you can move forward in life and you can live a happy, healthy, productive life, and you could overcome these obstacles and really make your dreams become a reality. So she's here today to show you how to make your dreams a reality. And I'm very excited to have her on the show. Natasha, thank you so much. It's an honor to have you on the show today. I'm really excited to hear, you know, more about, you know, the different things that you do and how you do it. And, you know, tell everybody a little about yourself and, and what you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, I'm a 43 year old, uh, wife and mom of two girls. Um, I'm also a chef, so I've been sort of busy over the last 43 years, but, um, basically the way I got into my coaching is from my own life experiences. And I think, um, that's what makes me such a good coach for people is because I'm relatable. Um, and I come with a very sort of like raw, authentic approach and, I found myself sort of um, at the at a very young age um, confronted with depression at, around the age of 19. Um, I wasn't sort of your typical like high school kid going straight to college or university. Like I really didn't really know what I wanted to do. And so all my friends were going to college and university and I just kind of was this like free spirited wanderer, not really sure what to do. Um, but I did sort of have this dream of becoming an actress. So I was waiting tables and saving up my tips. And eventually I decided to head off to Vancouver, BC in Canada and pursue acting because um, a lot of the acting schools are there in, in Vancouver. And so my mom helped me um, tremendously. My parents have always, always been so supportive. And um, we packed up her blue Jeep with like everything a you know, 19 year old bachelorette could possibly need like towels and bedding and like beauty pour strips and plates and all this kind of stuff. And we drove across um, the province from Alberta to BC and she helped me move in and got me all settled. And then she drove home really fast and got a speeding ticket because she thought if she slowed down, she'd probably come back and get me because <laughs> I can't imagine leaving my little baby girl, you know, a province away on her own downtown like yeah. Vancouver. So um, kudos to her for having the strength to do that. And I thank her for helping me, you know, su support my dream. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like there I was living the dream and, you know, living downtown, I had the beach and, um, I was getting a job at the Oregon fair. It's this organic market. So I'd be, you know, wait, working there and then going to acting school. And one day it, it kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. I was just hit with this question of what's the point of this, if we're all just going to die. Like it just kind of came out of nowhere. And it was like, what is this? And it consumed me and it scared the crap out of me. And I remember I was on the phone with both of my parents. And I remember my dad saying, you know, I remember experiencing something similar when I was a little bit older than you. And it's just like, what is the point of all this? If we're, if we're all just going to die, like, where did this come from? And so, um, I sort of got, popped out of this beautiful bubble that I was floating in and landed hard um, into depression. And I, you know, slept all day and lost my, my drive and my motivation and, and anything moving forward. And so eventually my mom actually came and picked me up and moved me back home. And so I went back to like waiting tables, back to my old friends who I loved dearly, but I mean, they were all just kind of partying and drinking and stuff. And I just didn't want to be doing that anymore. Um, back to my old boyfriend, which at the time was like, gross um and so yeah I um had to sort of keep going um having given up on my dream like that was a time in my life where I didn't believe in myself to to seize my moment and mm -hmm. I think that's 
a huge sort of sentence for people that they can relate to. Oh yeah, that was the time that I didn't, you know, seize my moment moment because of this and this factor. A lot of it really is just your own self-belief when you look back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I kept going and um, eventually I found uh, cooking culinary arts, uh, which was my new passion. I absolutely loved that. And I fell hard into it and I became a, a Red Seal chef and traveled across the country to do that. And um, fast forward, I sort of uh, met my now husband and woke up sort of one day one kid later in this like shitty small town and my husband gone all the time with his job and me just kind of like how did I get here I was probably about 32 or 31 yeah. and so I had moved from my hometown to this little little small town um in Alberta and he was gone working all the time and I was taking care of a kid and I wasn't working and I was just like watching daytime tv feeling like a POS and <clears throat> I think a lot of moms can relate where they just, some moms don't feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, being a mom is enough. Mm -hmm. I like, I never had a dream of getting married. I never, I never had the dream of, of having kids. I just, but this wasn't, that wasn't me. And so somehow I had landed here and I was just wasting the days and feeling like I wasn't, I didn't have a purpose. I wasn't excited to wake up and I wasn't helping society at all. And mm -hmm. So that was my, that was sort of my, my pivotal shifting moment of it's either, you know, you got to shit or get off the pot. Like what, what are you going to do? You have to choose your direction. And looking back, that's when I tell people like it is a choice. Yeah, yeah. definitely is a choice. I get you totally. I, I kind of felt like that myself in my own life. You know, I needed, you know, it was great being a mom and I love raising my children. I love them dearly, but I needed more. I needed to feel accomplished. I needed to feel and not that, you know, being a mother is a very accomplishing, you know, um, thing. You're, you're raising children and it's a beautiful thing. And I'm not, I'm not undergrading it at all, but I felt like I needed to be doing more for society. I needed to feel accomplished. I needed to know that I was making a difference in this world. And, you know, and, and I wasn't at that point in my life at that point. And so I, I had to find what made me feel good, you know, and out of all the stuff I was doing, they, I wasn't there yet. And I needed to figure out what my true passion was, what my, you know, what ignited me, what really stirred the, the fire underneath the pot, what really, you know, when I woke up in the morning, what was going to make me feel like I wanted to get out of bed, you know, and was it like that for you? Did you feel like, you know, you needed that certain thing to, to make you like you, you, had all this stuff and you were, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough. It wasn't what you actually needed, you know, and, and how did you, how did you come to that conclusion and, and how did you actually move forward and, and get yourself out of that stuck, you know, feeling and that, you know, that you were an autopilot and this is not where you want to be. Yeah. I mean, always being so grateful for, for what I had. I mean, my husband was working really hard and we had a beautiful home and we were stable, um, I think what basically happened is, um, a friend of mine sort of got into my inbox and got me into working online. And so I got into network marketing. So that was sort of the stepping stone to where I am now, but it gave me purpose. Cause I was, it was involved with health and wellness. So it's health and wellness products, helping people feel better and look better. And so I was like, Oh, I can do this. This means I can make an income make friends and work because I always had this drive to work and make my own income and be independent and here I was not working not independent at all by any means and I just really wanted yeah. to earn an income I don't know it's just something that I wanted to do and so I start I dove hard into that and I got really good at it and with network marketing as a lot of people probably know comes personal development so that right. introduced me to audible books which I became obsessed with like I've been so starved for learning for so long. And so I started listening to like Tony Robbins and um, Jensen Saro. She's got some really great books. She's really like in your face, sort of like raw, true of her struggles and stuff. And then, you know, like Mel Robbins and all those people. And then eventually I got into Jay Shetty um, and came across his certification program. And this was like, yeah, this was a full yes for me because not only was I going to be able to work from home because I had um, kids, I was going to be able to make an income, but help people 
I could actually help people. It just seemed too good to be true. And I was obsessed with it. And I finally woke up with a purpose. This suited me, you know, because again, like I wasn't your typical person. I'm like, there's no way I'm doing a nine to five. There's no way I'm putting my kids into daycare. It just wasn't what my husband and I had decided to do. I'm raising my kids. Um, and this just gave me, gave me purpose. So I dove into the certification program and really focused on mindset because the mind is so controlling and it, it can bring you down or it can bring you up. And so I, um, really learned a lot about awareness, awareness Mm -hmm. and effective listening with my clients and helping them have the awareness of what's really going on and diving deep. It's not, it's not like therapy, like it kind of is, but it's not, it's, it's more like I'm guiding them to develop the tools that they need to Mm -hmm. find the the true person that they were born to be, find their self-believe, re- belief and reignite that spark and so I can you know set them off on their own to to go and conquer their dreams yeah no that's wonderful you know I I think it's important that we we actually you know have something in our life that makes us feel like we have a purpose you know that we that we feel accomplished because it you know for me too I I felt I had that same feeling I wanted to help people I wanted it you know I want I stood home with my kids I raised my children but I loved helping others and I had figured out I had to figure out how can I do that you know what can I do to actually you know be able to help others and be able to do, you know, take care of my children and raise them the way I wanted to, but yet do something that gave me purpose with, that was meaningful. And I knew I was changing other people's lives at the same time. Now for you, you know, you, you, you work with a lot of people that, you know, feel stuck that, you know, have depression, they're going through grief, you know, they might feel numb because of all the, all the emotions they're going through and the, you know, repressing those emotions, they kind of lose track of who they are as a person. You know, what are some of the things that people can do to kind of get themselves moving forward in life? Because it's really understanding the coping strategies of, you know, you're in this predicament, but now you have to try to figure out what can I do, you know, to get myself out of this predicament? Now, what are some of the suggestions, you know, that people can, you know, listen to this and are, you know, they want, they want something better for themselves. They don't want to feel like this anymore. What are some of the steps that you, you would suggest that they could start doing to get themselves in a better place? Um, I really think that people just need to sit back and, and slow down and, and take a look at their surroundings and see where, like even make a list, you know, make a list of what is it in my life right now that is serving me and what is not. And slowly work down that list, like stupid baby, simple steps. Like, for example, if I have a client that wants to start working out, for example, I will literally like be like, okay, so day one, we're going to start thinking about working out. We're going to start thinking about what kinds of exercises do you want to do Pilates? Do you want to start walking? Do you want to lift weights? Like, what what is it you want to do? That's all you have to do on day one, you know? And then day two is maybe, you know, pull out your workout clothes and and put them on your bed. So that they're there in the morning, you know, okay, cool. I can do that. Like literally make steps so easy for them that they they can do that, you know, and don't overwhelm people with these like huge goal lists and stuff like that. And really not focusing on the end goal and really focusing on the moment, but eliminating like for me, it's, it's been like, okay, well, I feel like crap today. What is it that can bring me joy? Um, Things like, tapping into your creativity. Like I've gone on this creativity journey of, okay, well today I'm going to paint by number and tomorrow I'm going to bake something. Um, and and the next day I'm going to, you know, I, I, I bought this big roll of paper and a bunch of paints and took my kids outside and we just painted with our bodies and got messy and had fun. And so my approach is with joy and with play and just like really getting people to slow down. But again, going back to your surroundings, like who are you surrounding yourself by? Are they people that love you no matter what? 
Are they people that if you decide to end your marriage are still going to love you? If you decide to leave that job are still going to love you? Like truly loving you for who you are. Your support system is so important and having people that are going to support you and love you no matter what you do. But making sure that every single day you're like throwing glitter throughout your day of little things that bring you joy. You know, if it's gardening or cooking or, you know, taking a class or spending time with your kids, like spending quality time with your kids reading and putting your phone away you know? Yes. So, I mean, it's different for every client. Obviously everyone has different um, goals and what they want to achieve, but I really, again, I come from a, a place of play and like getting people to slow down and just bring the awareness of like what is around me and like, what can I do every single day to go to bed knowing that I, I, I did good today. I'm doing better. Like I, I can go to bed knowing that today I took one step forward to where it is that I want to be and where it is that I want to end up. Yes. Oh, I agree. Totally. I think a lot of people I notice when it comes to self-care and it comes to self-love, a lot of people feel guilty of giving themselves self-care and self-love. They feel like they have to put everyone else around them before them. And they feel that they, that it's the wrong thing to do, that they feel guilty if they put themselves before others, but people don't realize that in order to help others, you need to help yourself first, you know, and, and what are your thoughts about that? Do you see that a lot with people, with women that you, you work with, you know, do you see that they have a, a kind of like a guilt, you know, they, they don't, they want to put everybody else before themselves and then they probably get themselves burned out and they probably, you know, they start to lose you know, self-worth as well, because they're just draining themselves inside. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And a lot of it is just, you know, women trying to, for the last, I don't know, 5,000 years living in, you know, a, a man driven world. I'm not like a crazy feminist or anything like that, but women are trying to do everything. They just, yeah. they, you know, they wanted to step up in life. They wanted to maybe get out of, you know, changing diapers and baby vomit all over them. And, you know, maybe get a spot on wall street for wall street or something like that, you know, but um, so a lot of it is women trying to do everything and um, we're tired, we're tired, we're tired and we need to start asking for help. We need to start delegating things out, but hundred percent, I've been that woman. And still like, if I miss a day of taking care of myself first, I'm grumpy. Like I'm less patient with my kids. And so yeah. I prioritize my time first thing in the morning. And they know that like right now I'm working, mom's working. So they know that this is my time. Um, mm -hmm. And when I get up in the morning, I either read or I meditate, I do my workout, and then I do some work. And then as, as soon as that's all done, then I'm free. And it just, it's so liberating, liberating knowing that I did the things that I needed to do. Not to say you have to meditate, read and work out, but whatever those things are for you that are going to fill your cup, you know, it's so cliche, but fill your cup and feel okay. Like now I can relax and not be like, Oh, well, I still have to do a meeting later. I still have to work out later and being stressed about taking care of yourself and then going to bed frustrated because you didn't get the things done you wanted to do. Um, and my kids see that, like they see mom taking care of herself first and they might not love it right now, but right. you know, in the end, they're gonna be like, well, my mom, you know, did what she wanted to do first. And then she took care of the other people. Obviously they're safe and they're, they're fed and stuff like that. But you have to remember that people are watching you too and um, that you can teach them so much just by doing. Yes. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, what are some, you know, after you start to apply self-care and self-love to yourself, you know, how did you feel as a person? Did you feel, did you feel renewed? Did you feel refreshed? Did you start to get a clear mind of, of you know, who you are and where you want to go? Because I think sometimes when we get, take time to, you know, work on ourselves, we start to see things in a whole different light and we start to recognize who we are as a person. I think because sometimes we are so busy trying to be superwoman that, you know, when you try to be superwoman, you, f you forget who you are as a person and your purpose, your real purpose of, of why you're doing all this. It's, you know, and, and I think, you know, you have to reset yourself every so often. You have to renew yourself, you know, and it should be a priority. You should at least take, I think, a certain amount of time a day to reset yourself and to renew yourself. Like you were mentioning earlier, different ways of, of applying self-care. You know, what are your feelings about, you know, consistently, you know, changing your mindset and changing the way you do things, you know, in order to really figure out who you are as a person and what really makes you happy? Because, you know, 
know, when once you realized that, you know, helping others was a, a, your purpose, your life probably changed around. You probably now, you know, you felt like some of the pieces to the puzzle were actually getting put together and that probably made you more feel more at whole. Now, do you how do you feel like when you speak to other people and you coach others, you know, put in, you know, re renew and, and reset in yourself, you know, you know, what are some of the advice that you give others? I mean, so much like that's such a great, great question. I have all these amazing answers coming through. But like, first of all, I just want to say that everybody's job is helping people. And that is their purpose. You know, even if you're like delivering a pizza, you're helping yeah. a mom of like five kids right now, like get food into their kids mouths. You know what I mean? So everything yeah. that everyone does, like if you're still helping people, if you're cutting hair, if you're picking up the garbage, like everybody's job, if you love what you're doing is helping, like every little bit helps. And so don't discount that, you know, you don't need to be like, I love Taylor Swift, but you don't need to be Taylor Swift to have purpose and have meaning. Um, but yeah, I definitely noticed like my confidence, like when you're doing what you are supposed to be doing, like what your heart and your gut and your mind yeah. want to be doing, you like, you can't, you're changed. Like my, my family and friends are like, your voice has changed, you know, just, I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, the way you speak, the way you present yourself, they can tell like people know when I'm doing my best and working on myself. Like it's your true self comes out. Cause you're just not sort of like hidden and stifled with all the crap that kind of takes over you when you're not putting your heart first. Right. Um, something that I've kind of developed and I've, I've come up with and it, I've used it and it works really, really well. I call it the shush effect. And so you can try using this and tell me like anybody can apply this. It's so easy, but throughout your day, you're going to have, thoughts come into your mind that don't feel good in your body and mm -hmm. all you have to do is shh it away you can say it out loud or you can say it in your head like um for example you know if you're making yourself breakfast and you have an extra piece of toast and you're not supposed to be eating carbs it's just shh, shh, shh <laughs> and watch it disappear like I use this so often now I don't even realize I'm doing it when I'm you know doing my workout and I know my kids waiting for me. It's like, sh just, you know, shush away the thoughts that don't feel good in your body because they're going to lead you into a downward spiral of negativity and um, being harsh on yourself. Don't question your worth. Don't question the words that are coming out of your mouth. Speak your truth, be yourself. And so shushing the shit away, it's your ego. You know, it's your ego trying to protect you. I mean, if I've sort of dove into this whole spiritual awakening over the last sort of like few months. So I do speak on energy and ego and stuff like that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but your ego is there trying to protect you and you can just think it and tell it you're good and you don't need it. And really just shush away those thoughts that are holding you back because you're like, ugh, you know, my message doesn't matter. It, why should I do this? It doesn't matter. No one cares. It's like, stop it, shush it away and go do what you really want to be doing. I love that idea. You know, there's yeah. so many times I get thoughts into my head. I know they're not healthy thoughts, but yeah. they're things that bothered me or something that somebody might've said something and I feel hurt or, uh, you know, there are things that just pop in and, and I don't want them there, you know? And I like that idea of just saying, shush. Yeah. And then moving forward, you know, that's a great, great idea. Picture it like, you know, when you're in the movie theater and you're watching a movie or even at home and you're watching a really good show and someone's talking in the background and someone's like, shh, you know, and everyone just kind of is like, oh, I'm just but um, that's a good point too. Like other, other people's stuff. Like if someone said something or did something that you can't just shake, just shush it away. Just shh. And just watch it just like disappear. It's yeah. Awesome. Try it. Use it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So it, are there other things that people can do like as they're moving forward? Because I think a lot of people, you know, they they just need coping mechanisms. They just have to understand the steps. Like, you know, it's baby steps. And, you know, this is step one and this might be step two. And then, you know, this technique is, you know, it will, you can incorporate it. And, you know, and what are some other things that you find, you know, when you're starting to incorporate self-care and, and taking the negativity out of your mind and those thoughts out? out of your head and moving forward what are some other steps and, and some other coping mechanisms that you find really helpful when people are trying to get unstuck and trying to move forward 
There's a couple. Um, one of them I use, uh, who uh, Mel Robbins developed it. It's the five second rule and she counts backwards. Five, four, three, two, one, get out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one, call that person. Five, four, three, two, one, book the appointment. And that one works really well. She kind of got, she used that to get herself out of bed because she was struggling big time with anxiety and depression. And I know mm-hmm. that's a huge factor for a lot of people in the world. So um, another one I've used is, um, and I, I teach my clients is responding instead of reacting. This is huge. I like, I'm a Taurus. I, my mom raised me to have a voice. Like I was born with a fire inside of me so I can be, you know, I can be pretty harsh, but mm-hmm. over the years I've learned to control my reacting and, yeah. and responding. And what that means is, you know, if someone says something that triggers you, instead of being like, yeah, nah, nah, and jumping down their throat, um, sit back for a second and, and sit with it and be like, okay, why is this bothering me? Because if I react, I'm going to say and do things that I'm going to regret, which are later going to make me feel like crap. They're going to make someone else feel like crap. And then it's just this vicious snowball effect. So if you have, if you take a second, like take two seconds and be like, breathe, why does this bother me? Why is, what is in this message? And, and just think about it. And depending on the situation, you can respond then and there, or you can sleep on it. Like teaching myself to sleep on something before making a decision. That's okay. Giving your, the, giving yourself the time and grace you need before saying or do something that you're going to regret, which is going to cause that negative chain of effects. But honestly, like, um, again, like I've struggled with depression, as you guys know, um, and so it still creeps in like these things will still creep into your life because um, it's a part of you and that's OK. Is it? So something I like to say, and I saw this quote was that um, loving yourself is not learning to love every version of yourself. It's learning to accept. No, it's not. Sorry, I'm, I'm butchering that. It's not becoming the best version of yourself. It's learning to love every version of yourself. So nice. depression is part of who I am and that's okay. And just when it comes in just to acknowledge it, but not letting it consume you. And even last week it was trying to creep in and I was like, okay, so here it is. It's trying to consume me. What can I do? And I would do the smallest thing. Like, you know, what? I'm just going to, I'm going to get up a little bit early. I'm going to make a coffee and I'm going to go back and sit in bed. I'm going to read because that is good for me. And then I'm going to put on, you know, a 10 minute yoga video and do that and just do it as crappily as you need to. It doesn't have to be perfect and pretty. Just do the things, force your things, yourself to do the things that are good for you. You know, make a cup of tea, sit in your garden, call someone that's going to make you laugh or dive into the things, no matter how crappy you're feeling that may not feel good at the moment, but you're going to feel better after. Cause I, it led me to, you know, eating a little bit healthier and, you know, I was dancing with my daughter in the living room and going through the motions of it and just like, you know, forcing yourself to do the things that eventually are going to get you out of that, you know, if it's depression. Um, yeah. That yeah. sounds awesome. I like that idea. I like, you know, because I think sometimes people are, you know, embarrassed to mention that they're, they're depressed, you know, but depression is, is a natural feeling, you know, and everybody goes through it at some point in their life. But the problem is that some people fall into it and they fall deep into it and then they have a hard time getting out, you know, and, and, and that's what we want to try to prevent. When you start noticing the signs, we want to get ourselves out of that. You know, we, you know, what can I do so I don't go deeper into depression? How can I get myself out of there and then like try to get myself elevated to a new level so I can move forward. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's, you know, I, I, the fact that I, I love it is that people nowadays are talking about mental health more and, you know, because so many people have so many different issues connected with mental health, but, you know, for years, like we were talking about before the show, it's, it was such a taboo topic. Everybody said, no, don't talk about it. People are going to look at you differently. They stigmatized it. They labelized it, you know, and it's okay. It's okay to feel fearful. It's okay to have depression. It's okay to have anxiety. These are, these are natural things that everybody goes through at some point in their life. It's just learning how to cope with it. I think it, and, and just learning tools that we can incorporate in our lives and to get us through it because it's part of being human it's not it's 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 unavoidable at some point in your life things are going to trigger you and they're going to make us feel a certain way and it's just learn how to deal with it I think in the best way possible what are your thoughts about that yeah absolutely I mean it's different for everybody you know 
um, I'm looking out my window right now and I see like a mom going for a walk with her baby in the stroller and the dog, you know, like who knows how her morning was going, but she made a good decision. That's good for her body. And like, that's another thing getting outside. Like it's so underrated to get outside and literally like, this is where we're, we're created from. We're created from the earth. So get outside, just like feel the sun on your face or the rain, who cares? And you know, the breeze and stuff like that. Like I make sure that I'm outside multiple times a day, like barefoot, getting grounded, getting the vibrations and the healing for, through the earth. And like, I know it sounds sort of like woo woo, like granola, but it's so true. Get outside and breathe the fresh air. And I just like, I just want the world to just slow down, you know, slow down, put your phone away. Um, like think like I used to, uh, my coping mechanisms, I would be up till like three in the morning, like Netflix binging and like two bottles of wine kind of thing. Now yeah. when I, when I'm, when I need a coping mechanism, it's like, okay, I'll watch a few episodes and maybe like one or two glasses of wine. You know what I mean? So it's okay to have those coping mechanisms, but you have to control them. So that you're not wrecking yeah. yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, tell me like some of the different services that you provide to, to people. Like, I'd like to know more about like, you know, the different things that you could do to help people that are going through these, these emotions and going through the, the feeling of feeling stuck and, and not knowing how to move forward, not feeling that, you know, that happiness within, you know, what are some of the services that you do to make people feel better and, and help people move forward in life? Um, well, I do have, so I do one-on-one, -on -one. um, that's my favorite. I love doing one-on-one, -on -one, um, coaching sessions. I do group sessions. I do every couple of months. I usually do group sessions, um, getting, you know, women together and men are welcome to, um, to just kind of, um, who have sort of the same, like if I have a few clients that I feel like would be relatable, then I get them together in a group if they're agreeing to it. And then I find it quite powerful to have women in a group together. Um, I want to be starting to doing some retreat treats um because i want to get people together more i feel like we're on social media a little bit too much so retreats is in the future but basically my main thing is one-on-one -on -one. i do have like an ebook and things like that that people can grab and if they feel like they need to get to know me a little bit more but uh, yeah one-on-one -on -one is 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 my favorite i really love having deep you know meaningful conversations with people and just being that person to listen you know it's like sometimes I get on a call with a client and it feels like they they haven't been heard and it's the first time that they're being heard um yeah. it's just very very satisfying and when I see the the light bulb moments for them when they start to remember and feel who they are and like oh yeah I could do that I could do this it's you know eliminating their excuses I'm totally like rambling but yeah one-on-one -on -one, one -on one is definitely my favorite yeah yeah I love yeah. it Love it. Now you can, you, do you do it on zoom? So you're able to really talk to anybody anywhere. They could just yeah. come to your website or something. Absolutely, yeah. Um, one of my clients recently was from Korea. So I, this is so cool too. Like, I just love that aspect of social media being able to zoom with anybody all over the world. So yeah, we do zoom. Um, I have done a couple of face to face, but mostly it's, it's on zoom. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Now, where can people find you? Like, what's your website address? Like, where are places people can find you? Uh, my website is unlockyourbestself.ca. Um, so everything is in there. Um, and I'm very open. Like, you can message me anytime on Facebook or, or through my website, uh, just through Natasha Rosie. And I, I'm totally okay with people messaging me with questions or concerns or things they're struggling with. Um, I'm not going to turn anybody away. I also have a... Uh, a budget friendly option as well for people who, you know, um, can't quite afford specific amounts because I want to be able to help as many people as I can. So if you're struggling with income right now, there's lower budget options available as well. Um, but yeah, um, Unlock Your Best Self uh, is, is my business and I'm, I'm really proud of it. And I'm excited to, you know, just be a part of the ripple effect to be helping as many people as I can. I love it. I love it. Now, if you wanted to emphasize on everything we talked about today, are there specific things you would like to share with the audience that you feel are important that we talked about that you feel can really make an impact in their lives? I think just reach out, you know, and use the resources that 
the world has to offer and just know that it's not shameful to be depressed. It's not shameful to not be able to get out of bed. It's not shameful to feel numb. It's not shameful to, you know, not feel completely in love with your child at a moment. Like it's, it's okay. And it's normal. And I just want to normalize these deep, dark feelings and just help people get out of it, but also accept it uh, as a part of who they are. Um, I do also touch with, um, people who have struggled with suicide. Um, I, when I was uh, three months pregnant, lost my brother to suicide. And so that's something else that I I found that people are gravitating towards me, people who have lost someone to suicide or who have struggled with, struggled with suicidal thoughts as well. Um, And so that is something that I've just recently started adding into, you know, helping people who are struggling with that or the loss of someone through suicide. So um, yeah, that's definitely a topic that comes up. And I think that's a very important topic because a lot of people, especially if they're going through depression, you know, after depression, a lot, there are a lot, there is a large percentage that, you know, resort to suicide. And the scary part is, is the people who really resort to suicide, they don't show any signs or symptoms. They just, they just go and they, 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 and they give up on life and, and they just want, they just, you know, they can't handle it anymore. And they resort to suicide as an option. And, you know, and so many people, I, I, I've known people that felt so guilty, even though it wasn't their fault, because they, I should have saw it coming, I should have saw this, you know, and they feel so guilty. But, you know, people who commit suicide are really people who you, you don't even know, because they don't show any signs or symptoms, they kind of put that, that fake face up and, you know, inside they're hurting, and they're in pain. And outside, they look like they're fine. And, you know, and and that happens so much. And it's the people who give signs and symptoms are the ones who are really reaching out and say, please help me, please help me. You know, those are the ones who, if they talk about suicide, they're, they're basically saying, I need your help. I don't want to go this way, you know, and the, you know, so we really have to, you know, there, there are so many communities and, 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 and every mental health community, there are a large number of people who, you know, um, resort to suicide because they can't deal with their problems. It's just too overwhelming for them. They don't want to live like, like, like this, and they don't know any other solution. So I think suicide is something that really needs to be addressed in every community. And there are people like you could actually help people people like them, you know, it's a blessing because, you know, it's not what, you know, it, it, everybody gets hurt. Everybody goes through the pain, you know, the person committing the suicide is in pain. The people around them who love them, you know, are in pain and it's, it's very, it's something you never get over and, and, you know, learn how to, to understand it, learn how to cope with it, learn how to move forward and maybe even learn how to help others is, is, is such a, a blessing in itself. So I, I'm so glad you're doing that. You know, it's, it's so important because yeah, every community that there's just such a high percentage of people who, you know, resort to suicide each year. And, it, and, and we need, we need people really, you know, going out there and, and helping people in one of the best ways is coaching and therapy, you know, for, for people. And I even, a lot of healthcare industries are now understanding that when they see people in pain or they see people in depression, they automatically, a lot of the, a lot of the healthcare systems will offer therapy or they'll offer coaching because they, they realize how suicide is so, is rising in, in a lot of, a lot of different areas. Yeah, I mean, even if like, you know, the ones like you said, that seem like they're fine. So, you know, reach out to your family, reach out to your friends and ask people how they're doing, you know, I know Matt Robbins, like text one friend a day that you haven't talked to in a while and just reach out and be like, hey, I was thinking about you. It makes someone's day because you don't know what's going on in people's minds. You really don't know. Um, And they might seem fine, but they're not. And so if you are one of those people, reach out. And if you're not, reach out because you might find one of those people and you might help them and, you know, just ask, 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 ask. Yeah. 100%. I so yeah I you know this has been a blessing talking to you today you you've done you know I really admire what you're doing I think what you're doing is great I think you know there has to be more people like you helping people get through these hard times because so many people feel stuck so many people are unhappy with who they are so many people have a hard time looking in the mirror and seeing that reflection because they don't like that reflection they see so you know people like yourself who could help and guide people step by step because it's not an easy road 
but you know, making little tweaks little by little, it's amazing how much progress you can make, you know, over time, you know, and then you can eventually see the, the, the end of the rainbow and it's a shiny rainbow and it, it's not easy to get there. But once you get there, it's, it's an amazing feeling because you feel like a new, your new self, you know, and it's just, you know, learning how to take everything that you taught them and just keeping it as part, you know, incorporating it as part of your lifestyle. And before you know it, I think people don't even realize that they're incorporating those steps that you, you've taught them because it becomes so natural, I think. Yeah, I mean, and just remember that everything I'm teaching them is already within them. I'm just bringing it out. And that this, this the life you're living right now, that is your story. And that is something for you to overcome so that you can help other people with your story. You know, so if you feel like your life sucks right now or, you know, things are being thrown at you or whatnot, just remember that you can overcome this. And if you have overcome it, you now have a gift to help other people with it. A hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you this for saying that. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for being on the show. This has been amazing. I, you know, I'd love to have you back on the show. You're an amazing person. You have amazing qualities. Your story is amazing. And I'm so glad there are people out like you in this world that are making change, you know, because we need more people like you. So thank you so much for taking the time out to share this, you know, and share your story and to share the, the different tools and techniques and briefly go over them today to help people get started on a, on a new road to recovery. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. You have a great day. You too. <laughs> Thank you.